There was wonderful teachers in the school. Miss Davenant, for instance. Liam Cooney, a man for whom I've got the utmost admiration. Mr Schmai, Yannick Schmai. Uh, Peter Brennan was a deputy head. He was a wonderful man. Mr Zielitsky. Maurice Hughes. Mr Luke, who taught French. Our first strings teacher, uh, a lady, Patricia Ball, or Mrs Round, as she eventually became. Mr Handyside was also very good. Mr Handyside. Scott Price taught me edible music. Um, and was, as he is, unbelievable. Mr Craig, who taught the cello. My classics teacher, Mr Dainty. And Steve McCann, another deputy head. In my department I had Mr Lackaniff, who ran a railway club in the basement of Edison Hall. A geography teacher called Miss O'Shea. Paul Subbings, who's now the head, obviously. He's the reason, basically, that I'm a classics teacher now. Perhaps the single most inspirational teacher I've ever come across in 25 years at Cardinal Vaughan was Mick Ashworth. And Frank Dacey was a pleasure to work for. The head of history was a great lady called Norma Benjamin. Miss O'Connell, English teacher. When he taught French, he used to have a cigarette out of the window. <laughs> he came as a student, I think in 1980. He was just a delightful and extraordinarily witty colleague. I remember walking into his room, it was noise that attracted me. And I remember the first lesson I taught as a, as a student on teaching practice, standing outside the classroom, terrified, knees knocking, and I made a vow to myself that if they start throwing things or shouting, I will turn around and go home and go and do something else. And I enjoyed that lesson immensely, and then I fell in love with the place. It was plain, as plain could be, that Michael was a very gifted teacher. Michael Gormalli was one of the great, great heads of Cardinal Vaughan, and his gifts were multifold. And such an incredible brain. Uh, he, was, he was an intimidating polymath, really. The results were excellent, kept on improving year after year. He had the ability to tell off a boy, but retain their affection, whatever. I remember getting Saturday detentions and walking up and him asking me why I was there me explaining what I'd done wrong, him sending me to the shop to buy him a Mars bar and then telling me to go home. You can really get a good sense of the type of headmaster that um, Michael Gormali was when you think about the fact that he insisted that there was an ice cream van at sports day. Mr Gormali also uh, played a part in the uh, various school pantomimes that were put on under Pat Cross, who was the head of PE. Yes, I was one of the ugly sisters. Uh, it was alleged by some, but I was all three, but that wasn't true, of course. Some bright spark who designed the programme had added at the bottom Mr Gormali's costume by courtesy of Harland and Wolf, who were the shipbuilders in Belfast. He never ever lost the boy's affection. He was popular. But I'll never forget the occasion when he came back. He came to talk to me in the playground about something inconsequential. The boys hadn't seen him for two or three months, saw him and then spontaneously broke out into applause. 